All right, so I want to welcome everyone to Restore Retreats Field Report. Um, this is a webinar series focused on all things coastal in Louisiana's Bayou region. Uh, my name is Victoria Bork, and I am the Special Projects Coordinator with Restore Retreat. So certainly included in Field Report's description of covering all things coastal in Louisiana's Bayou region, that would include today's guest, the Greater Lafourche Port Commission in Port Fouchon. Today, we are gonna be hearing more about the latest and greatest in the port's environmental work, coastal partnerships, which Restore Retreat is very grateful to be a part of, and more on where energy meets the environment. Uh, now, I came on to Restore Retreat in 2017, and one of my first things I got to do on the job, and still a favorite today, was participate in Fouchon Friday. <laughs> Port Fouchon Restore Retreat and other partners really give a well-rounded view of the theme where energy meets the environment um, while at the port and showcasing the Bayou region in Louisiana as Louisiana's working coast. So we do this through um, a tour and it's always a favorite, a crowd favorite, my favorite, everyone's favorite. <laughs> so while today may not be Friday, it's close enough. So let's go ahead and kick off with a pre Bouchon Friday with Greater Lafourche Port, Port Commission Executive Director and Restore Retreats Vice President, Chet Chasson. Thank you very much, Victoria. Um, it's, it's always good to hear that a visit to Port Fouchon is, is people's favorite. Uh, we, as, as you all are aware, we, um, we enjoy what we do every day uh, and, and it's good to be able to um, to share the passion and the love that we have for um, Louisiana, uh, in particular South Louisiana and, and Lafouche Parish and South Lafouche um, and, and being able to be a part of that working coast that, that you mentioned um, all the time. So thank you for having me today and I will um, move forward with the, the presentation and um, be happy to answer all the questions that you have as we move forward. So as, as we all aware, there's Port Fouchon. There's a, a little white line on the top of that screen. That's uh, the current elevated LA-1 access uh, to the port. And really our, our, our whole livelihood and everything that we do, our day-to-day -day activity is all based on providing access to the Gulf of Mexico. And that via waterway, roadway, and airway with the airport in Galliano. And as a segue into that, so back in, um, in 2001, we acquired the airport from uh, Lafourche Parish government, um, really adding uh, to the capability that we have to service the offshore energy industry on a daily basis. There you see the, the airport, um, pretty good shot. There's um, a 6,500 foot runway, a full parallel taxiway, um, and an instrument landing system, and obviously a, a, a ton of helicopter activity out there, but really strong in fixed wing aviation as well. We have about 130,000 people uh, utilizing, uh, going in and out of the airport on an annual basis. It's one of the fastest growing airports in the state of Louisiana. So for us, um, Port Fouchon is really um, good as what it, at what it does. Our, our tenants are um, great at what they do in servicing the offshore energy industry, but it's really all about our proximity, being right there on the Gulf of Mexico uh, within um, really just a hop, skip, and a jump to all of the activity that's taking place in terms of uh, exploration and production of oil and natural gas and the future of um, offshore energy in terms of uh, wind and other renewable capabilities as well. Uh, so for us, it's all about location. You can see that white hot dot in the middle of that red circle um, being the southernmost port into the Gulf of Mexico located uh, closest to all of the activity um, in the Gulf of Mexico is really what's key to our success. And our, our customers over the years, uh, what we've created in the port uh, by working very closely with uh, private industry, 
uh, has created the most efficient and effective place to do business in terms of uh, the offshore energy industry and really providing the best uh, expertise and capability in the offshore energy supply chain. That being said, we obviously have a large uh, commercial and recreational fishing fleet that operate out of Port Fouchon. Within a 40 mile area of the port, there's over 600 structures in the Gulf of Mexico, all of those uh, being an artificial reef, creating habitat, which allows for that ecosystem to thrive uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and the surrounding marsh areas. Ecotourism is, is continuing to be um, a good part of, of uh, our community. Um, everything that we've done in terms of recreating habitat, the natural habitat that exists, as well as the work that's being done by numerous um, entities in recreating the habitat, recreating marsh in the area is obviously drawing wildlife and visitors the like. So all of this is done uh, as we develop the port, uh, all the act activity that takes place. It's all with um, holistic resiliency in mind. Everything we do to uh, attract new business uh, for our economy, uh, to really enhance our working coast is about being resilient and doing things in a, in a very smart, uh, balanced way uh, to have both a strong and healthy and vibrant environment, as well as a strong and healthy, vibrant economy to protect our communities um, and, and to do, do the things necessary um, for our communities and our state and our national economy. So I, as we've developed over the years um, in the port and in the surrounding communities, um, again, we, we think about resiliency. We talk about, um, you know, we, we actually do things where we're building um, our structures uh, to higher wind load strengths. We're elevating them to proper FEMA flood elevations. Uh, and as we all know, we have half of an elevated highway. Um, you know, gray infrastructure, road access to the port is critically important as we move forward into the future. And that's why we're, we're um, so keen on talking about um, this next phase of phase two of the elevated LA-1 project. And we're so proud to have been a part of the structure of putting a financial package together to actually get that to come to fruition. Um, and you can see the list there. Uh, but the, the Port Commission is proud to play a, play a role in um, making this all come to fruition. So we should see this project um, bids opening in um, October of this year by DOTD and um, some sort of preliminary construction started in the end of the first or second quarter of 2022. So as we've gone throughout the years, you can see this is from uh, just part of 2019-99. Mitigation and restoration through our development over the years has been um, important. We've done it very strategically. And you can see um, what it looks like now. Well, this is back from 2019. You know, the green infrastructure that we provide in, in part of our uh, development of Port Fouchel uh, is resiliency. It allows us to protect ourselves and surround ourselves with good uh, marsh aprons and elevations that provide really good protection um, and as well as a great habitat. You can see that area is about a little over a thousand acres and still growing of marsh just to the north of, of the port. The Maritime Forest Ridge uh, is part of that same location. Um, that the ridge was, is actually now about 6,000 linear feet long. Um, that, that's a rebuilt ridge that we had extra material for. That's not part of mitigation, that's beyond that. Uh, and we had extra material, so we utilized it beneficially. Uh, all of the dredge material in Port Fouchon is utilized beneficially. Um, uh, and we, we need to do that. We need to think about that both locally, but also on a, on a regional, statewide and national scale, utilizing all the material we can beneficially to um, 
enhance our, our, our landscape. We've had um, numerous partnerships you can see on that list just for the Maritime Forest Ridge. I'll go through some other partnerships uh, um, a little bit later. As part of our continuing development uh, in Slip D, um, we dredged that, that channel uh, and we're continuing to dredge actually as we speak. I'll show you a video about that later. Um, but that's a 1,000 foot wide slip by about 3,800 feet deep. And uh, we utilize that material right in the center of that picture you see there is where we uh, pump the material. Um, and that has created um, or is creating um, uh, a coastal wetlands park. And we're really excited about this coastal wetlands park. Um, what you, I'm gonna go back to the other slide. What you see there in that, in that area is um, about 90 acres, a little over 90 acres of um, marsh that has been recreated uh, in that area and what we all call Old Rapalais Hole. Uh, we're very uh, fortunate to have good partnerships with, um, I see um, Amanda here with, with Wisner to allow us to do mitigation uh, in that area. Uh, they worked with us on that. And um, uh, as we move forward, um, we, were, we were only mandated for Slip D to have about a 65 acres of mitigation. We were able to create um, not a little over 90 acres of mitigation. So that has allowed us to, to utilize that area to create uh, this coastal wetlands park. This picture you see here is um, the master plan for the park. You can see a tidal creek running through it, which you'll see in a second is already completed. Um, you can see some boardwalks that are running through that area with some little ponds. Um, you can see a parking lot with um, an elevated pavilion. Um, and you can see um, also on that picture uh, in the upper right hand corner, there's a picture of where a, a pavilion, uh, a larger pavilion would be to have larger events like rodeos and that sort of thing. And we've already started some of this uh, and we'll show you that in just a second. So there's the, the coastal wetlands park and what it looks like um, today. You can see that tidal creek is already done meandering through um, that area, that marsh area. Um, being the fact that we have our own um, pontoon excavator and operator that works for the Port Commission on a daily basis, um, he was able to build that for us. So it really reduces cost whenever you have those types of that type of equipment and really good and talented people that work for you that can uh, can go and actually do this for you without having to contract it. Uh, so so we were easily able to uh, to build that tidal creek. Um, you can see that we just completed um, this um, tidal creek uh, culvert crossing. Um, you can see where we built a, a wharf and there's actually a kayak launch there. Uh, so over the summer in just the next uh, month or so, we're going to open that up to the public. That, that plug that you can kind of see in the middle of the picture is going to be gone. We're working on that now. And people will be able to go in there with non-motorized vessels and kayak and fish and enjoy the wildlife and the marine habitat that, that has been created in that area. You can see as well, uh, we built a bridge because we had to cut, cut through there to get um, ingress and egress of water into that tidal creek. You can see that's what that part looks like now and it's cut through to flotation canal. Uh, so that, that is currently uh, finalizing construction. So we'll be utilizing that bridge and uh, that kayak launch and everything will be opened in the next uh, couple of months. So as we move forward into the future, um, we have applied already um, for land and water conservation fund funding. Uh, so we're, we're really just waiting any time now to hear back on uh, if we were able to, to achieve that initial grant for continuing to build out portions of the coastal wetland park. We've applied for about $750,000 uh, $750, project, which would be 50% or so paid by the Land and Water Conservation Fund and then the other 50% would be paid by the Port Commission. And that would allow us to, to continue to build out again of the Coastal Wetlands Park where we would build out a parking lot. Um, we would build out a small uh, boardwalk that would connect the parking lot to our new uh, Fouchon Pavilion that we're gonna build. 
and as well as uh, an elevated pavilion to oversee the tidal, uh, tidal Creek and Coastal Wetlands Park that'll um, have some placards on there, uh, in there that would show the type of, of habitat that, that we've created there with different types of plants and um, birds that you will see or other marine uh, wildlife that would be out there. We're very proud to say that we also worked with uh, Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, our tourist commission group. Um, and uh, we worked with them on a project where we received funds to buy some viewfinders. And we've put a couple of those out at the public boat launch thus far overseeing um, the marsh out there. And we're gonna put more at this, um, the coastal wetlands park uh, on that elevated pavilion, as well as we'll have handicap accessible uh, on the ground for um, folks to come out and be able to have access to that as well. So as we move forward in, in looking at some of the projects that we've worked on and continuing to work on is um, we've been working on Fouchon Beach and this about mile long section of Fouchon Beach uh, really since the mid 80s um, in, in conjunction with the Fouch Parish government and um, the Wisner Land uh, Trust and Coyote Lang uh, Company um, on this area and really protecting um, the port over the years. Um, just several years ago, we built a geotube project and we're having to repair it because as you're all aware, we've been hit with multiple storms over the last several years. Uh, so we're, we're working on that. We actually have put together um, about a $6 million project to do repair and renourishment on that, that area of, of the beach. Uh, we've received, uh, so the Port Commission's funding 2 million. We're very happy to say that Lafourche Parish government is partnering with us for another 2 million. Uh, they bonded out their, some of their Go Mesa dollars. And then uh, assuming that the state legislature approves the CPRA's uh, annual plan, we will receive $2 million from that annual plan to do that $6 million project. Um, so we're, and um, Wisner is donating um, $100,000 to that project as well. So we're very happy uh, with that. And we're going to continue to build that Fouchon Beach project uh, over the next year. Um, so I talked about partnerships. We've had a number of environmental partnerships over the years. Just this one is highlighting some of the work that we did with Nichols uh, Biology Department uh, on that GO2 project. Um, when we first built it, uh, they came in and do some planting and received an environmental award from the American Association of Port Authorities. But you can see the list. Um, Restore, Retreat, BetNEP, Shell, CPRA, DNR, Lafouche Parish Government, NOAA, uh, and, and many, many others that we worked uh, with through the years and continuing to do so. We'd like to, to thank all of those uh, partners for working with us through the years. It takes, takes more than just one entity for sure. So as, as we're moving forward, we are uh, very closely working with CPRA and, and um, NOAA on this Quipper project, TE-134. Um, it is a funded Quipper project. It is an engineering and design phase, and it's going to rebuild marsh on the west side of, of Bayou Lafouche. And this is called the West Fouchon Project. And um, we're working closely with them. It was actually funded and approved with having an offshore borrow source. And uh, we, when, when it came about, we started to talk to, to CPRA uh, and said, hey, how about we kind of drop back and let's look at utilizing Bell Pass and Bayou Lafouche as your borrow source. Uh, so we've been, been working very closely with them. Actually, uh, there's a uh, permit application out there to have some, some uh, geotechnical work done in Bell Pass and Bayou Lafouche to provide the, the geotechnical data they need to assess um, to assess the working uh, and utilizing that material. We think it's going to save money for the project, so we potentially could do even more beneficial work with that same amount of material um, or the same amount of money because of savings of um, pipe extension and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the, the more you, you uh, have to pump, the more uh, length of area that you have to pump material, the more it costs. So we think shortening that area instead of borrowing it from offshore, that this would be a better 
source of sediment and um, something that can be beneficial to not only Port Fouchon, but for numerous ports across the Gulf Coast uh, as we move forward and look at rebuilding, uh, rebuilding Louisiana's uh, coast. We're also working uh, on a, a project with EPA through QIPRA. Uh, it's a project uh, that was approved through PPL 31 through uh, phase zero analysis. And that's continuing to use um, Bayou Lafourche and Bell Pass and our, our, our channels um, in our Northern expansion, flotation canal slips A, B and C as a borrow source uh, to place this material um, on um, even further west, uh, but in the western side of, of uh, Port Fouchon, uh, continuing to, to do really good work and really great marsh creation projects that are consistent and actually listed in the master plan as uh, um, projects. So for us, our future development is absolutely holistic resiliency. As we look forward into the future, um, in deepening of the port, we want to uh, beneficially use every speck of material that we dredge, um, leveraging our development and dredging dollars for uh, environmental dollars, which would uh, create a better ecosystem and critical infrastructure protection. So there's our future development that we're looking at is, is on Fushan Island. Um, and uh, as we look forward into uh, to deepening uh, Port Fouchon, um, that's gonna be where uh, this deeper draft port facility that we wanna uh, uh, build for uh, into the future. So we just recently were authorized by Congress uh, at the end of December through WERDA uh, to go to uh, minus 30 foot draft. So that, again, that was authorized. We're gonna get advanced maintenance to 33 feet. Uh, the ultimate goal is to get um, Bell Pass itself to 50 feet, and we're we're working towards that. Hopefully, in the next water bill in in a couple of years, we'll get authorized to go Bell Pass to 50 feet. So, currently, what we've been authorized um, through Congress is to get uh, Bell Pass and Bayou Lafourche um, authorized to 30 uh, feet, as well as flotation canal into our northern expansion slips A, B, and C. Um, so as we move forward, we want to build um, on Fushon Island a deep water rig repair, refurbishment, decommissioning, project cargo, offshore renewables cargo uh, facility um, for the future to really um, make Port Fushon uh, a, continue to be the premier uh, location for anything offshore energy related. Um, in its initial phase of going to 30 and as well as 50 foot drafts, we're going to create about 20 million cubic yards of dredge material. That's where we get into the environmental partnerships. So as we embarked on this 203 study I just talked about in, in, in investigating um, the feasibility of deepening the port, um, it became clear that um, we needed to pull together some folks. So we created with the Water Institute of the Gulf, um, the partnership for our working coast. And that has grown to have partners of, with Fushan, the Water Institute of the Gulf, Shell, Chevron, Danos, and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation that really is looking at um, a public-private partnership, because that's what it is, and looking at the best ways to utilize this material for our deepening uh, to enhance uh, the environmental landscape in and around the port, but to provide the best um, protection for industry and our community uh, to the north. So those objectives for that are, are obviously mutual benefits for our community, for our uh, infrastructure, um, for our habitat, and to look at quantifying the habitat that's going to be created with the marsh that's going to be created out there to quantify that carbon capture and sequestration benefits. So again, as we move forward into the future, we wanna maximize the benefits of our uh, development. Uh, again, our, our deepening work, the work that we do when we dredge is as much environmental uh, as it is economic. 
So assuming that we can utilize all of that material beneficially, um, instead of um, just dumping it off into the Gulf, which you see on the, the before and after, that's the amount of material uh, we can place in and around the port area um, with, with that, uh, the dredge material that we're gonna create over the years. So what does that look like into the future? What does deeper draft look like? Um, you can kind of see in that picture in, in the background, there's a bunch of windmills out there. We don't know that that's where the windmills are gonna be built, uh, but we're certainly advocating, advocating um, uh, right now as we speak uh, for a, a good realistic um, balanced energy portfolio and the Gulf of Mexico is no better place to do it. Uh, and we want to play a, a key role in that. So for sure, offshore wind, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, renewable energy and offshore wind. Um, and we're, we're working with the governor's office um, and, and many others um, with the legislature, Dr. Joe Ogeron is, is a key to, to a lot of that because he is in the wind energy um, business. Uh, we're really working on how we can show that Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico is prime for offshore wind uh, and any offshore energy. Um, and we're working through that and hopefully we'll have a report produced in the next six months or so that highlights that the Gulf of Mexico is prime for offshore wind and um, because all the reports that we've seen in the past have all been done by uh, groups from the Northeast. And obviously they're, they're uh, going to show that the Atlantic coast um, is um, better situated. Uh, but we believe that um, off the coast of Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico are in a good, a good position to uh, advance offshore wind and any offshore energy. And again, um, having a balanced approach to our energy portfolio in the United States um, in utilizing both uh, what we currently do in terms of offshore oil and gas, as well as um, expanding into offshore wind and other capabilities in the renewable sector. So that's all I have from, from the PowerPoint presentation. And uh, I believe we still have a few more minutes. I have about a six and a half minute video I'd like to show, and it highlights the current um, maintenance dredge project and slip D dredge project that is taking place. Um, and I, I think it, it really just shows um, visually what, what uh, mitigation work looks like and what utilizing dredge material to build marsh really looks like. So bear with me here. Are y'all seeing this? Hey, Chet, this is Victoria. I'm still seeing your presentation. Okay. It's showing me that the screen sharing is paused on here. Okay, let me see here. Chet, hey, it's Simone. I would I would um, stop screen sharing. That's what I'm doing. And then, right yeah, then open that video. Uh, you know what I mean? It's almost yeah. like it needs to get reset. So yeah, I get out of screen sharing and then pull the video up. I'm doing that now. And I did see somebody in the chat just now. We did ask Chet for a copy of the presentation, which he's made available to us. We're going to post that along with the recording. And hopefully Chet will let us share this video on the ROAR website yes. after this. There you go. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so that's that's the end of that. Um, I hope I hope y'all enjoyed that that video. I just thought it really highlighted um, what we do on a daily basis uh, in Port Fouchon. Um, I, I think I think one thing to mention here is that uh, that project and that 200 acres that we potentially can create, we're looking at anywhere from 40 to 45 thousand dollars an acre to create that marsh. Um, when you when you think about pricing for mitigation, uh, it's typically a lot more than that, um, more than double that for sure. So I think we, we're, we're very fortunate to have access to that material in our channels uh, to be able to, to do some really good things in a, um, an affordable way, still expensive, mind you, but in an affordable way and um, do really positive things for our environment and for our economy. So with that, that's that's all I have and happy to take any questions from, from anyone on the call. Thank you. Hey, this is Victoria. <clears throat> so I just wanna say that video was such an awesome visual, I think um, for anyone, but especially people who aren't as familiar with coastal projects and what they look like in the start to finish, especially of dredging material. I thought that was a great visual. Um, when is that project slated to be completed? So um, that, that project is a, another, we have another six months of dredging, maybe a little less than that, but you know, we're, we're kind of taking our time, um, making sure we're not, we're not trying to rush this thing because in order to build marsh properly, uh, you need to be, um, you can't be full bore on a dredge project. Luckily this, pro this is a, um, about a 24 inch dredge. That's about the largest you want uh, to build marsh because other than that, you, you, you have trouble with keeping your containment dike mm -hmm. uh, together and that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate how efficient y'all are doing everything. That's so great. Um, you had mentioned earlier when you were talking about the Quipra TE-134 project that West Bell was a borrow site. And it made me think about this. Do you have any update on the West Bell Headland project as part of the Terrebonne Basin Barrier Island? Right, so there's still, um, building that. Um, their Great Lakes dredge is out there. They're partnering because they're doing some coming out of some back barrier marsh work. Weeks Marine is doing the, um, I think they're on Trinity Island maybe um, mm -hmm. out there, but I know the governor went and visited a couple of weeks ago. It's coming along very well and they're continuing to do that work. Um, and I believe they have, uh, when Hurricane Zeta really did a, a number on, on that project, um, in the, the islands in Timberloo Bay. So they're, they're, um, have started working back again and they're, they're continuing to, to rebuild some of that. So that the, the storm impacts kind of put them back a little bit in terms of time, but they still have several months of work to go. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, let's see if we have any questions. Thank you for answering those, by the sure. way. Let's see. I know we had a few people that uh, joined us and then had to hop off early. And then Simone did address the question about the slides being available. Um, but just to reiterate, yes, they will be available as well as the recording of this webinar, which will be posted to our social medias and um, our website. And Chet, I guess when you're good, you're good. <laughs> it doesn't look like we have any questions. Victoria, I have a question. Oh, hey, Marguerite. Yes. No, I have a question. Hi. Yes. Hey. Um, and chat at the end of the the video might have answered my question, but of doing such a project, and, and I know you have some, you know, scheduled further down. How much of it is um, staffed by local firms? And I mean, I saw Crosby and I saw GIS. Is uh, just out of curiosity. So, all of it. Um, so, hundred percent of that project is being done by. So the engineering uh, and design and project um, monitoring and um, is being done by GIS engineering and the dredging is being done by Crosby Dredge. So. Greatness. Yep. Okay, one more question for you. You said that the uh, Coastal Wetlands Park is gonna be opening this summer, is that right? 
to fishing yeah. or kayak yeah. fishing, I should say. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. I'm going to go purchase me a kayak. <laughs> Let me know if y'all decide to put a weigh-in station so I can make it real competitive. Right. <laughs> the uh, the the thing about the coastal wetlands park and that area that we did for utilizing that area for slip demitigation is was really to um, obviously it was close to, to the dredging location and we could we could pump it in and it was it was very close and easy easy to do but it was really we chose that area and thank thanks to, to Wisner and Amanda for allowing us to to do mitigation and create this coastal wetlands park there um, since it's on on their property um, it we really did it because most people hear the term mitigation but never can actually see it and touch it and feel it and we thought it was there was no better opportunity than than now with this material to create something a mitigation area that people could see you could drive by it uh, on la 3090 or you could even you know jump in a kayak a non-motorized vessel um, you could cast net on that wharf and, and really enjoy it and understand what mitigation is and why it's so important um, that we do it in a smart way. Um, so that, that's really why we chose it. And, and, re and the other thing is the backdrop of that coastal wetlands park and this great marsh that we created and, and all, of, uh, all of this habitat and, and, and wildlife, the backdrop of it is this, this vast industrial facility. And it's really highlighting how industry and environment can and do work very well together. And one, at least at least down here in South Lafouche, one cannot exist without the other. Yeah, I've always thought coming in from the outside, especially the unique relationship, the syner the synergies here are just, it's such an interesting thing to see. Um, and then working on the environmental side and being part of those coastal partners that you mentioned in your slides has been really rewarding as part of Restore Retreat. And I know we're thankful for y'all for always being opening open to doing um, different coastal partnerships with us. So definitely want to thank you for not only that, but also for being here with us today. So thank you for your time. This was awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to add one last thing. To, I know Marguerite's interested in, in this, uh, but the Coastal Wetlands Park itself and the design and and assistance is actually being done with another um, Lafouche Parish firm in uh, the Planners Design Group. So they're working with us on that coastal wetlands park. So. Chat, this is Amanda Wisner. Thank you and the port so much for all y'all do down there in, in keeping the environment intact and helping enhance it um, while building such a wildly successful business. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're happy to, to partner with, with you all and, and, and everyone else. Uh, and, and Restore Retreat has been uh, a great partner. It's uh, Simone and Victoria do a great job. Um, so thank you all for having me um, and, and to do this. And I'm always happy to be a part of whatever y'all are doing. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time and for everyone else for jumping on to listen with us today. Um, we will have these posted as soon as they're available. And we hope y'all have a great rest of your Fouchon Thursday <laughs> instead of Fouchon Friday. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one. Thank you, Chad. Thank you.